Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, and we got a 3D printer. It's something I've wanted for years, but I've never like, can I justify it? We're not gonna make products with it. Do we really need it? Whatever. My seven-year-old daughter, Clara, finally talked me into getting one for home. And as you can see, it's at the shop now. But I, it's like, I bring it home. It's so light, it's so easy. Anyway, we got the Monoprice Select Mini. I think it's the S1. Um, it was about 220 US dollars on Amazon. They also have it, have it on Amazon.ca. Um, and as an entry level, like a two or three hundred dollar printer, it's like I'm super duper duper happy with it. Um, you know, they have the two thousand, three thousand dollar ones. I, you can't justify that as a starter, but as a starter, like pay two or three hundred bucks for it, I'm really really glad I did it. In this video, we're going to show all the cool stuff that I've made over the past three months or so. I've been taking little clips here and there, and uh, yeah, super happy. Um, I did. I did find that the learning curve, like I'm a CNC guy, we've got all the machines here. Um, I know how to do this stuff, but the learning curve for 3D printing, there, there was a bit of a learning curve for sure. I know how to design parts, so that wasn't the problem, but the biggest thing was just getting parts to actually stick to the table and not fly off all the time. And that's just a 3D printing trick that you learn with experience. Um, so as you can see right now, I'm using the blue painter's tape with a heated bed, turn the heat, heat on to 50 degrees, so Celsius, and then uh, it's been like super reliable. I haven't even replaced the tape in like two months. It's just been awesome. Check out some of the cool stuff that we've been making. So we finally brought the printer into the shop. So, small printer, big printer. Not a printer, CNC mill. But today, today's shop project is these wire clip organizers. So instead of having extension cords everywhere, finally got one of those cover thingies. So we've got one strip of wire coming in. And we use the wire clips to clip them on perfectly. This one did crack because of the way I printed them. You can see which way the lines go, the grain goes. So as you tighten the screw, uh, it just separated. I don't really, I don't really care. Food for thought, it's fine. So yeah, the wires can now go nicely under there. And then the only one hanging down is my uh, laptop cord, which I like to take home every night anyway. So this is how it came right off the printer. It's uh, basically four inch by four inch, which is almost the same size as my print table. Pretty cool. And it's got all this support material for the overhang. So you go in here. Ta-da! What do you think of this? Can you pull this one out? You just gotta squish it. This thing took nine hours to print at a 0.3 millimeter layer height. Because I don't really care if it looks perfect on the outside. But I mean, dude, dude, like, like I made this. So while the mill is making some noise, making some parts, I'm gonna show you my newest 3D printed addition to the shop. Shaller bin, Grimsmo bin. The first bin that I printed, I did zero infill, so it's literally just an outside wall and an inside wall. And I don't know if you can see it on video, but I can absolutely, uh, I can feel the two walls, outside and inside, pinching together. It's definitely weak, but you know what? It's strong enough. The floor is a couple layers thick, so that's a lot stronger. Um, but as a proof of concept, as a test, like, I don't really mind, it still functions just fine. This one I printed, I don't think it's completely infilled, um, but it's way stronger. Yeah, I think I, I mean the walls are so close together that you can't really do a, a lot of empty gap on the inside, but it's mildly infilled, I forget.
3D printed battery holders in AA and AAA. So this is cool. This was just a mess before. They were all standing up and they'd fall over. Um, really, really happy with how this turned out. A little bit of room to grow. We can print more. Love it. So on my Nakamura lathe, this is the, um, the white oil, oil container. And it, it drains pretty quickly, so it has to be filled up uh, at least once a week, if not more often. This is difficult to unscrew, so I modeled it up. And on the second try, I have to go bigger. Um, I got it perfect. So this just allows you to uh, get a, just a bit more leverage, a bit more grip. Food for thought, when I'm sitting at home designing this, I didn't know how much room I had, so I could definitely go longer. Here's a part that I just made called agitator dogs for my washing machine. You can see the, the original one in the middle there that's all broken. And uh, this was in the bottom. These are four dogs that are chopped into a million pieces. And you can see. There are the replacement parts. It actually took quite a while. I found STL files on Thingiverse, but I had to modify them quite a bit to get them to do exactly what I wanted, because um, I'm picky like that. But um, pretty sweet little project. So real quick, I'm gonna run over how this beautiful little machine works. It's quite simple in theory. Think of a hot glue gun and how it heats up and it squidges out glue, except this is all computer control. So the table moves in Y, the head moves in X, and the head also moves in Z, up and down. So with the code that you load into here, it tells it how to move and how to print the part. And then it also tells it to rotate this little wheel which squidges this plastic filament through the hot extruder and melts it. Uh, everything is controlled, even the temperature of the extruder, the temperature of the heated bed, when the fan comes on or off, uh, any dwells, any retractions, all this cool stuff. Um, in theory, it's it's a very simple machine. Like my seven-year-old daughter can now mostly run it. You know, she she's not quite designing parts herself, but if we have a code, she can load it up and start printing. And it's been super duper reliable. I'm just blown away. Like the only downside for me to this printer is that the print size is only four inches, so I'm limited. So maybe we'll get a bigger one here for the shop that can actually print some bigger stuff. But it's really fun. <laughs> All right guys, thank you for watching my first 3D printing video. I mean, I don't want to make, you know, tons of them, but it, it's been a really fun project. And uh, as you can see, I've made tons of really cool stuff, and I'm sure there'll be lots of other cool stuff that I'll be making in the future. Maybe I'll try to film it and share it as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for a lot more cool stuff.